The Greatest Stories Never Told is a series of videos that highlights the little known but significant contributions of alumni, administrators, and staff at historically black colleges and universities to provide a well-prepared science, technology, engineering, and math workforce. Today we spotlight Jesse Russell, whose innovations in digital signal processing led to the modern cell phone that changed the world. The cell phone has revolutionized how we connect to our world. It has created a paradigm shift in how society communicates. Cell phones have become indispensable for businesses, families, and individuals. Its usage has gone up from 34 million to over 204 million in the last 10 years. Few of us can imagine life without our cell phone. But all of this would not have happened without the remarkable advances in wireless technology made by pioneers such as Jesse Russell, an internationally known inventor who graduated from Tennessee State. The beauty of, of historical black colleges for me, just talking to me personally at a personal level, is that what they did for me, they gave me the nurturing and the freedom to challenge they didn't shut me down. The groups and the teachers were more nurturing, or the professors were more nurturing, right? And what they did was they gave you a chance to express who you really were. If you're sitting in, in an SBCU and say, as I did in 1972, when I said, well, I want to work at Bell Laboratories, right? I ended up at Bell Laboratories in, uh, in 1980. Uh, I was selected as one of the most outstanding engineers in America under the age of 32. Coming from a very poor environment, single family, ten brothers and sisters, at least uh, nine brothers and sisters, right, uh, out of Nashville, Tennessee. I, I never will forget the, the what, once I won that award I was telling you about earlier, I didn't know anything about cellular radio. Never, never heard of it. It was in our organization. But right after they broke up the Bell system, the technology that nobody wanted was the cellular radio system. You know, and that they had tried to send it to the telephone companies, right? And then they sent it back to at and right? So we had this sort of displaced group of people, right? I know, forget the day my, my, my boss, his name was Jess Turner, he said, Jesse, I know you don't want this job, right? To hit the cellular radio group, but I believe that the future of communications will be deeply rooted around this concept of cellular radio. And I never will forget the first day I was on the job, I called the meeting of all the managers and so they were all white, I was the only black guy, right? And I was saying, well, what's the problem, right? Why, why? Because they were losing so much money, it was pathetic. They were just losing money like you wouldn't believe. You know, they said, the problem is that we could only make money when people are in the cars and the phone rings and they answer it. If they don't answer, it goes, it's that most of the time people are not in the cars, right? And so what I said was, well, uh, that seems like an easy problem to solve, right? Why don't we just take the phone out of the car and just put it on the people? And I said, I guarantee you, if you put the phone on the people, I was thinking about just making money, right? So I said, I said, guarantee if you put the phone on the people, when it rains, they'll grab the phone. And I said, every time they grab the phone, we'll make a dollar, right? <laughs> you know, right? You can tell a brother coming from the street, right? It's like selling stuff, right? So, so I said, every time they hit the phone, right? We'll make a dollar, man. And I said that, uh, that, that we could turn the business around. At the time, I didn't know that the phones looked like the ones and they had these big bodies, you know? And so y'all look like you about it, right? right. And so they, they were very nice and they didn't say, look, it was kind of stupid for you to think that we could actually put these kind of phones on people, right? <laughs> so they said that, no, no, the problem is there are more people than there are cars and we had designed this for cars. And so there's not enough spectrum to allow us to put that many people. That's why you can't do that, right? Then I said, oh, that's what your problem is. But they didn't know I was probably one of the leading authorities in signal, digital signal processing. Uh, because that's how I'd gotten the award before, but they didn't know that, right? So what I said was, oh, I, oh, that's a simple problem to solve. 
what we'll do is that we'll completely digitize the speech, we'll substantially reduce the amount of bandwidth required on a per user basis, and I describe to them how you could do that, by what modulation schemes you would use and so forth. And then I said, if you do the math on that, and I can show you how we do that, that you could get four times the number of people in the same amount of spectrum. And it took us from like 1984 to 88, and we built the first digital cellular system any place in the world. And we took that business from like about a $100 million business to $5 billion, simply because I challenged, I had so much self-confidence, right, yeah. that I was able to challenge the status quo in the midst of all the stereotypes about African Americans, in the midst of an all-white group, that I had enough self-confidence to say what I believed, right, that could be done. Mr. Russell's innovations have continued with his own company, Inc. Networks, and is developing telecommunications for the future. So in the future, people will not just making voice calls or doing text messaging or data, they actually will be doing video calls like this as they walk around, not just with between two people, but right. between groups of people. So you have a situation now in the cellular communications industry where the devices, from an innovation point of view, is outstripping, outstripping the innovations in the network. Right. I mean, so you can build me the fanciest device you want here, mm -hmm. but there's no network to talk to it that can deliver the bandwidth that's needed to do these very fancy things that they talk about with iPhones and iPads, right? Then you have a very limited thing where if you want more bandwidth on this device, then it's better to put the radio transmitters inside the building. And once you do that, you now can build a very broadband signal going up as well as coming down. Now you change the whole tenor of how you design cellular systems. But, but, and, and that's basically what we did. I used to go out and back history month when I was at Bell Labs, right, speaking to young kids, six, seven, eighth grade kids, right? And one of the most touching things that I ever experienced, I was speaking to a sixth grader. And she says to me, she says, are you a real inventor? And I said, yeah, I'm an inventor. And I sort of talked about cell phones and I invent cell phones. She says that, well, I thought all black inventors were dead. No, I, I, th I think one of the greatest stories that ever been told is the contribution of black Americans in the 60s and the 70s and the contributions that they've made in technology. To be able to teach young people that the scientists, engineering, and mathematics are the foundation of our society. The satisfaction that you get when you look back, like today, when I see how many people can use cellular telephone systems, and, and many people talk to me all the time, and they said, well, I didn't know that it was a black guy that invented digital cellular communications. Mm -hmm.